Jack, thank you very much for coming. Uh, why would you want to spend time writing a book on bald eagles? Is there a need for more knowledge about bald eagles? Well, first of all, thank you, David, for um, being up here with me. Okay. And I enjoy talking with you, as always. Um, as far as why did I write this book, uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that we're seeing a lot of bald eagles these days that we didn't see 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. I'm a baby boomer. I grew up never seeing a bald eagle. And, um, and since we're seeing so many of them today, I wanted to, readers to know a little bit more about this bird, why we're seeing so many, okay. uh, and a little bit about its history with, with the American people. But what is your background? Where are you from? I grew up in Florida, um, on the water, uh, and uh, I am currently, have been for 30 years now, a professor of history. I'm at the University of Florida, specializing in environmental history. I also write books. Um, my last three books, I uh, veered away from writing for a strictly academic audience for, uh, uh, to write for more of a popular audience. Okay, and you won the Pulitzer Prize for one of your books, is that right? That's right, The Gulf, The Making of an American Sea, um, which came out in 2017. So when you went to your publisher and said, I'm gonna write a whole book on the bald eagle, what did they say? Very excited. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they my, uh, went to my publisher, same editor that uh, edited the, the, um, the Gulf of Mexico book, and he said to me, I, I could not have imagined you coming up with a better idea than the Gulf. All right, so let's talk about the bald eagle. Um, is the bald eagle all over the world, or is it only in North America? No, the bald eagle is truly an all-American bird. Uh, it lives in the wild only in North America. Now, there is a story, maybe it's apocryphal, that uh, Benjamin Franklin really didn't like the bald eagle, and he wanted the turkey to be the national bird. Uh, we'll talk about whether we have a national bird, but is there any truth to that? Uh, well, he did compare the morality of the bald eagle with the, the wild turkey, maintaining the wild turkey was an honest and hardworking bird, and the bald eagle was a craven thief uh, because it stole fish from uh, offspring, which it does. But he never uh, proposed the, uh, the turkey for either the great seal or the national bird. Okay. So let's clarify something that many people don't know, and I can't can say that I knew this until recently. Do we have a national bird? We do not have a national bird. Um, now, federal government websites will tell you otherwise, but they're, well, the federal government is wrong. I I, I can't believe that's ever happened. The federal government's wrong. No. <laughs> so not to say if I got it right. Every state has a bird, is that right? A state bird, yes. Okay, uh, but for whatever reason, when they came around to saying we're gonna have a national bird, they never actually passed legislation saying the bald eagle's a national bird, is that right? I have no evidence they ever came around to saying we need a national bird. Okay. Now we have a national mammal, which is a bison, a national tree, which is oak, and a national flower, all does, which is a rose, all designated by Congress. But Congress tomorrow could choose the sidewalk pigeon to be our national bird. All right, so. And don't put it past them. Well, there is an old saying by Will Rogers, the country's never safe as long as Congress is in session. Do you agree with that? <laughs> so let me ask you, um, when their country was being created, they wanted to have a, a seal. And so on the seal, they were gonna have a bald eagle. Is that right? Not initially. It took, them, it took Congress six years to come up in three committees, uh, 14 men and consultants, uh, congr uh, uh, congressional delegates and consultants, to finally come up with the Great Seal of the United States. And the bald eagle only ended up on the seal at the last minute. Okay, and who was the artist who actually drew the, the, on the national seal of the bald eagle? Was it a famous artist or was it a politician or somebody? No, it was actually, well, there were, uh, there were actually, uh, the drafts were, the original draft of the bald eagle was done um, by uh, the secretary of the Congress at the time, who was, and I, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Why am I forgetting his name? Um, um, it'll come to me in just a second. Uh, he's the one who proposed Charles Thompson uh, from Philadelphia, where there were lots of bald eagles, um, and uh, he's the one who proposed the bald eagle for the Great okay. Seal, and he said, there are some 60 species of eagles around the world. And he said, this must be an American eagle. Uh, and so he drew the first image for the Great Seal. And was that accepted? 
It was accepted, yes, immediately. Of course, we were, we were coming close to going to uh, the, uh, signing a peace treaty in Paris by that time, and so we were in des desperate need of right, a great so they, seal. All right, so why would you pick the bald eagle? There are plenty of nice birds that are in, indigenous only to the United States or North America. What is it about the bald eagle that attracted the founding fathers to say this should be on the national seal? Well, the bald eagle, I think it's, it's, it's pretty obvious to the, many of us. It's, it's a large bird. Uh, it's a charismatic bird. It embodies many of the traits that we associate with this country, um, courage, strength, and freedom. Uh, and it's highly recognizable with this white head and white tail and dark body. Why is it called the bald eagle? It's not bald, it's got, you know, hair. Why is it called the bald eagle? Well, I, you know, <laughs> um, it's so ba uh, bald, it will, People speculate where the term bald came from. Um, many think it came from the word piebald, which meant, meant uh, an animal or an object that's mottled, dark, and, and light, um, and potentially from that. Bald also happens to mean brazen, and um, the bald eagle was seen as a brazen bird, a la um, Ben okay. Franklin. All right, so we have the uh, North American bald eagle becomes on the national seal, not the national bird. And the bald eagles are minding their own business. Are people trying to kill them for sport or other reasons? Yeah, that's one of the one things. Uh, one of the things that's great about writing history is, is uh, discovering irony and, and paradox. Uh, and so uh, Americans uh, immediately embrace the image of the bald eagle uh, as a symbol of their country, and they put it on all sorts of things, um, uh, business logos, uh, all sorts of regalia, and but they. They hated the, the living bird itself. It was regarded as a predator like a wolf, uh, a coyote, or a mountain lion, a predator that needed to be controlled. So a bald eagle, a, a predator that was stealing uh, from livestock farmers and accused of all sorts of crimes it was not guilty of, such as flying off with pigs and, and sheep and calves. And babies, human babies. And, and, and mothers were warned. Don't leave your, your infant unattended outdoors unless you want a bald eagle to carry it away yeah. to now, its Now, a bald nest. eagle couldn't pick up a, hu a human, right? It's the no, a bald eagle, at, a, bald eagle with mo a large bald eagle with momentum behind it can perhaps pick up five pounds. Okay. And, um, but, now, so a bald eagle scene was the bald eagle to be shot, and Americans shot hundreds of thousands of them. Now, the bald eagles are all over North America, is that right? Y uh, yes, um, northern, from northern Mexico on up to Canada. Okay, so some people didn't like them, and then when DDT came around, and people said, why don't we use DDT to kind of eradicate mem many different animals, but including the bald eagles? No, they didn't intentionally try to eradicate the bald eagle with DDT, um, but DDT, which was released in the, the general market, of it. It, had, it had the effect of. Yes, it of made its way up the food chain and got into um, uh, the waterways and into the fish. The bald eagle is a fishing raptor. It'll eat birds, it'll eat animal, uh, land animals, but it prefers fish. Got into the, the marine ecosystem, into the fish, and then ultimately made its way up the food chain into bald eagles. And so um, bald eagles were kind of becoming extinct and became an endangered species for a while? We, yes, uh, we pushed the bald eagle to the brink of extinction twice. The first time was uh, by the late 19th, early 20th century. The bald eagle had all but disappeared from the eastern seaboard states because we were shooting it so much. Uh, and in 1940, Congress passed the Bald Eagle Protection Act but the, uh, to, to prevent the extinction of the bald eagle in the lower, lower 48. But then five years later, DDT comes out on the market. Well, there was their bounty, I guess. If you, you got a bounty if you killed a bald eagle in some parts of the United States, is that right, Alaska? In Alaska, Alaska um, imposed a, adopted a bounty in 1917 that lasted till 1952. It was exempt from the Bald Eagle Protection Act. Uh, and um, between, during that period from 1917 to 1952, the territory of Alaska paid bounties on over 250 thousand bald eagles. So where are the bald eagles today? How many bald eagles are there now, roughly, in the United States? A lot of them in Alaska, ironically. Um, very healthy population. We're guessing probably around 70, 75,000 in Alaska. Uh, but uh, they nest throughout the, uh, the lower 48 states now. Um, the, the population, the bald eagle was um, listed as endangered in 1973, 1974, a year after the Endangered Species Act was adopted. 2007, the, the 
because of restoration programs um, implemented by fish and wildlife, but also state right. wildlife officials. And uh, the bald eagle was delisted in 2007. And in 2010, the population quadrupled. All right, so. Uh... Yes. And can I add, though, we owe ourselves a pat on the back for that. We redeemed ourselves after pushing the bald eagle to the brink of extinction twice. And we owe ourselves a pat on the back for restoring the population, but we also have to attribute it that, and you and know, I've talked about this before, right. to bald eagles themselves. They have what I refer to as the ideal family values. They mate for life. They maintain a fidelity to the same nest as long as that nest exists. They raise their young with such care with such a devotion that when the young leave their natal territories between 18, 20 weeks of age, they often weigh more than their parents. So uh, let's go into this. Uh, the bald eagle is um, monogamous, is that right? Yes, it's monogamous. And many birds, uh, bird species are not. So what happens is the, the mating process is, uh, ritual is a little unusual. Can you describe in clinical details um, <laughs> The mating process, the way that they kind of uh, descend from the heavens? How about if I describe the ritual rather than okay. the mating process? Right, okay, why don't you do that? <laughs> uh, and of course, Walt Whitman did that in a, in a wonderful poem titled uh, The Dalliance of the Eagles. And when uh, an eagle, a female and a male uh, believe they are probably going to get together and become life partners, they conduct this uh, aerial ritual. They will eventually, they'll do all sorts of aerial acrobatics together and they'll eventually lock their talons and then they'll spin in the air in a free fall and go all the way down just before they hit the ground or the water, they'll part and, and fly off. On occasion, they do not separate soon enough, um, oh, oh, really? unfortunately. Sometimes they die, sometimes okay. they all don't. Right, so when they decide this is gonna work out, um, what happens? They build the nests? They, yes, they start building nests and they're fantastic. And who builds it? The, the female or the male? They, they, work, they do it together. They share the opportunity? They, 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 share they share the labor, yes. They get that from humans, right? Um, well, I've been with a few partners who didn't want to share the labor. Of how, I'm, I do a lot of house renovations. Okay, um, so. But, but um, yes, they share. And, but also, David, every year they add on to the nest. They refurbish it. All right. They, they go away for uh, after breeding season in their separate ways, which may okay. be the key to their lifelong All right, so they go away. Partnership. But when the egg is laid, uh, presume the male comes back eventually? The, the male, yes, the male, yes, the, <laughs> the male does come back. Okay. And and make sure there's an egg or two laid, usually two. Two. And do they take turns sitting on the egg? or? What they, they do. They do share uh, brooding time, yes. All right, now the bald eagle has an unusual eyesight. Why, why is that? Well, a lot of birds have uh, uh, extraordinary eyesights, and the bald eagle's eyesight serves its, its hunting. Um, it hunts its food, uh, and, and, and animals, when they hunt, or when they just, in any behavior, they, there's a priority on conserving energy. So bald eagles, we see vultures circling in the sky a lot, soaring, uh, hunting for um, food they can scavenge. Bald eagles will do that sometimes, but they'll often hunt from a perch and they can see a mile or two away distinctly. Um, and yeah. they, are, they are fast. Their they... eyesight is one or two or three or four times better than ours? You know, we can only guess, uh, some scientists say four times better, sometimes some scientists say okay. eight times. Now some people criticize the bald eagles because they don't do the hard work of going and getting the fish underwater. They, somebody, they might see a bear with it and they go and take it from a bear, is that nice? <laughs> From our point of view, no, but that's, that's part of you know, wildlife. And a lot of animals steal. Scientists now believe that stealing, unlike Ben Franklin, who saw it as dishonest and, and, and cowardly, uh, stealing is smart behavior. And, and right, so what they like to eat, they don't eat meat, they only eat fish, is that right, pretty much? They're not vegetarians? or No, they're not vegetarians. Uh, they prefer fish, but as I said earlier, they'll eat land animals and birds. Okay, so they also have an unusual neck. Can you describe the way they can rotate their neck, which I guess humans cannot do? Well, like a lot of birds, they, they can rotate their nest. Uh, I've forgotten how many, how far, not, not 360 degrees, but, but, like but near. 270 that, degrees or something? Probably something like that. All right, so they are always on the lookout for somebody that's got some fish they can steal, right? Or, or a fish that they can catch, catch they, they, they catch. But uh, a, little, a little unknown fact is that osprey, who they steal from a lot, 
have a 70% catch rate, whereas bald eagles have between 30, 40%. So, what, why, so why not that? steal? Yeah. Why are they so, so well, not, why, uh, why not steal? Why aren't they better at catching the fish directly? I don't. I don't think that science knows that. Okay. Yeah. So, how fast can a bald eagle fly? Well, um, you and I learned um, when we were together last fall and out on a boat, um, being shown bald eagles on a particular lake, that they can. Uh, this person who took us out had clocked them uh, flying 60 to 70 miles an hour. And how high can they fly? 10,000 feet. 10,000 feet. And Which is not the highest flying bird. Cranes, some cranes fly as uh, high as 30,000. So where do they, for the seasonal kind of uh, migration, where do they typically migrate from and where do they typically go? There's no set pattern on migration like with, as with songbirds um, and, and shorebirds, but bald eagle, northern bald eagles tend to, uh, after breeding season, fly south. Uh, southern bald eagles tend to fly north. Colorado bald eagles will fly up to Saskatchewan after breeding season. The Saskatchewan bald eagles will fly down to Colorado. Uh, so, and they're, so they're crossing each other. But some stay in their territory. If they can find fish, they don't, they don't migrate. Are there, is there any evidence that bald eagles are actually able to fly across the ocean? Yes. Uh, a, a couple have been known to fly all the way to Ireland. Really? Uh, yes, they were apparently lost. Uh, had, a, had a nice tailwind. I like to think that they followed uh, Charles Lindbergh's route uh, across the Atlantic. So they can fly, uh, well, if you're flying across the ocean, I mean, where do they, where do they rest for... Well, that's why I think they may have uh, flown Charles Lindbergh's route. They probably um, f flew up. To, I don't. I, we don't know for sure, but uh, um, they probably stopped in Iceland or, or Greenland and then and then kept going. And these were young bald eagles, juveniles, which now, tend to be more aggressive in their migration. Now, today, is it illegal to kill and shoot a bald eagle? It absolutely is. Okay, is it illegal to get a feather from a bald eagle? It yes, it is. Yeah. So if a feather falls off and you find it on the ground, what are you supposed to do? By law, you're supposed to turn it into the authorities. People do that? Um, I've talked to a few who have not. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I, I think most people do. Um, if, you know, if you find a, uh, you know, the bald eagles are scavengers, and so they put themselves at risk like, like vultures of being hit by a car. And if you find a body of a bald eagle on the side of the road, I so think most people are turning How close in. can a human get to a bald eagle before the bald, bald eagle flies away? You know, every, every bald eagle it has its own personality, and it really depends. Some uh, are, are more skittish of, of humans than, than, than others. And, um, but but generally, ten, generally ten a bald, bald eagle, not, not very close. Not 10 feet and they start getting nervous? I, I would imagine so, yes. Okay, so there are places in the United States where bald eagles who are injured are rehabilitated, to the extent you can do that yes. in Alaska and other places. Mm -hmm. um, so have you ever, how close have you gotten to a bald eagle? Oh, I've had one on my arm. Oh, really? I'm sorry they don't have the picture of me with it on. on really, on your my arm? My author picture on the book. Yes. And so it's on your arm. Was it wondering what you were doing with it? No, no, it was it was a, a posed photograph. But oh, okay. uh, no, I was introduced to this bald eagle, a uh, rehab eagle, a uh, flightless eagle, who uh, named Sarge, and um, I was introduced to her. And I tell her story in in, in my book, by the way. Now, and they wanted to get a picture of her on my arm. Now I've gone different places to look at bald eagles, Alaska and other places, and yeah. I noticed they seem to sit on the tree limb a lot. How much time a day do they sit there? <laughs> they sit there quite often. Um, I, I, I suppose they're like Norm at the, at the Cheers bar in Boston. And but they, they sleep that way, right? They sleep yes, they, they, yes, they roost in trees. For, for instance, at the end of breeding season, the end of nesting season, both of the male and female leave the nest and they'll spend their, their time um, at night in, in trees. So they just hold on. Branching, branching yeah. They just hold on and they sleep standing up more or so less. So their, 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 their thumb, or what we would consider their thumb, um, their back talon is ratcheted. And so when they, like any bird, when they sit down and they bend their legs, not their knees, we think they're backwards knees, but their legs, it activates a ratchet. And so their talons are gripping without any energy expended, gripping um, that, that branch and they can okay. fall asleep. So uh, today, uh, a bald eagle typically would live how long? 
in the wild, uh, in, in the t uh, 20s, as, as, as late as uh, their 30s, in captivity, um, some have been known to live beyond 40 years. And do they have a natural predator? Humans. Yeah. So the biggest danger to bald eagles is humans. Yes. Um, now, when there are chicks in the nest, um, the, the, the chicks are vulnerable to owls and, and hawks. Um, but not if mom or dad are in residence. Uh, nobody wants to fool around with a bald eagle. But once they, once they reach about five weeks of age, nobody's going to pick on them. How long is the baby in the, in the, uh, e the eaglet in the, in the uh, nest before it goes away and flies? Uh, so they will, f they will fledge around 12 weeks, but they'll stay on the nest because mom and dad feed them so well, just like we spoil our kids. Uh, they and so they there. leave about eight, 18 to 20 weeks, and then they'll, they'll migrate. But the mother and father are always bringing food back for them to eat, is that right? Yes. Even after they fledge, mom and dad bring stock the refrigerator. Okay. And is the same nest used for other birds? I mean, in other words, for other bald eagles, or they just use it once? As long as the... Uh, no, they'll, they'll use the, the same uh, um, couple will use that nest as long as it exists. Uh, and if that couple happens to go away, another couple might move into it. Really? Yes. But as long as as the couple survives and um, other bald eagles won't. They don't need to freshen to, up the to place. No they do freshen up the place every year. Clean sheets or And anything. some, the clean sheets, oh. uh, they bring in, every day they'll bring in new nest bedding, such okay. as in Florida they bring in Spanish moss. That's popular bedding. So but I should say, David, and you know this from reading the book, one bald eagle nest I write about was 35 years old and it went down in a storm. The tree collapsed, the nest tree collapsed in a storm. And the scientists who had been invest, uh, who had been studying it, estimated that it, it was 12 feet deep, eight feet across, and weighed two tons. Oh wow! So um, there's a phrase called a bird brain, but is that a fair thing? A bird's brain's not that uh, well developed, or the bald eagle's pretty smart? Um, I, I think that the bald eagle is pretty smart. I think wildlife is smart in ways that we, we can't even imagine. So um, what is your next book going to be on? Another animal, or what are you working on? Well, there will be an animal in it because I'm going to write a sweeping environmental history of the United States. Really? Yes. And um, Oh, thank you. How many uh, decades do you take to do that? <laughs> uh, I, I hope not too many. Uh, okay. So uh, the bald eagle is uh, something that you're fascinated by, and they're in, they're in Florida where you live. And there are most states in the United States are mostly in the northern states, the bald eagles? No, um, every state now has nesting bald eagles, and um, some more than others. Minnesota has the largest, in the lower 48, has the largest nesting population. Somewhere, I heard somebody clap, somebody's from Minnesota here, somewhere between 10 and 11,000 nesting bald eagles in Minnesota. Florida's number two with around 2,000 nesting bald eagles. Pairs, n nesting pairs. And if you want to go see in a zoo or a, another place the bald eagle, where's the best place to go? Are there places where there, there are enormous amounts of bald eagles in a particular zoo or, or museum of some type? I, I, most, um, probably most raptor rehabilitation centers, and every state has at least one, uh, ha many of them have bald eagles. Those are the good places to go uh, to see bald eagles. Now, bald eagle is one of various types of eagles. How many types of eagles are there? There's some 60 eagles um, worldwide species. Uh, there are only two who live, uh, two species that live in, in the United States. The bald eagle, obviously, but also the golden eagle. But the golden eagle also lives across other parts of the Western Hemisphere. And what's the golden eagle in comparison to the bald eagle? How is it different or the same? It's, it doesn't have the white feathers. Uh, it is slightly smaller, and it doesn't eat fish. It eats um, okay. land, an land animals and birds. Now, if you believe in uh, evolution, which I assume you do, probably, mm -hmm. um, what is the evolutionary reason why the bald eagle's kind of crown is white? Why not yellow or some other color? That's a good question that science ha has not been able to answer. Really? Yeah. Okay. And what about the brown? No a, a, again, we really, really don't know. I mean, usually bird feathers are uh, provided to f for reasons of, okay. of camouflage, but the bald eagle really doesn't have any need right. for that. So if I'm Here's what I speculate in the book about the whitehead, is that when you see a nesting bald eagle, 
uh, sitting on an, its eggs. Um, what you see above that big giant nest is its white head. It's clearly visible, and I think it's a no trespassing sign to so, other wildlife. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock had a movie called The Birds. Birds ever, yeah. So um, anybody ever seen that movie? So um, is there any chance I have to worry about walking somewhere and a bald eagle is going to come down and kind of try to bite me or something? Is that a problem? If you get too close to its nest, that might happen. I, I mentioned a bald eagle nest that was uh, on top of the post office roof in uh, uh, Dutch Harbor, Alaska. And patrons who went to check their um, their P.O. box were being attacked by really? the couple, yes. And so some of the patrons began wearing hard hats. Uh, so, I mean, when they attack, do they bite or they just kind of peck a little bit? You know, I think they just swoop down and threat, and if they're going to do anything, they're going to, if they're going to attack you physically, they'll do it with their talons. And what kind of noise do they make? Wimpy. So they, okay, and we presume they, they have some communications language between Oh, sure, them. yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there, is a, there is a caution call um, that um, they sound, but, um, and when they communicate with each other, uh, such as the, the female sometimes when she's been sitting on the nest too long and she wants a break or, or she wants some more fish, she'll kick her head back and she'll screech for the male. But in, to our ears, it's, it, it's not befitting of this, this bird that is, um, you know, an emblem for the United so States. So if you're walking around, uh, let's say, in Alaska and you hear and you see a lot of bald eagles, the noise they're going to make is not going to be that loud or not that impressive? It, it sounds like a tea kettle that you need to take off the, uh, the burner. Wow. Uh, that's, how I, that's how I describe it. Now, now, Colbert Report, remember his opening credits and the flag and the eagle coming in and this really powerful bird voice? Um, that is a red-tailed hawk. <laughs> okay. Or at least the voice of a red-tailed hawk. Okay. I mean, this was a show that did, uh, you know, trade on fakery, right? So today, uh, the bald eagle is not endangered. It's in pretty good shape in terms of being able to reproduce and, and live. It is thriving, but that doesn't mean that there aren't dangers that exist. And um, if you were going to write a book about another bird, what other bird is most fascinating to you? I, uh, I, I find the... Um, the sandhill cranes, interesting, because where I live in Gainesville, we have thousands of them. Gainesville, Florida, have thousands of them uh, to come uh, winter, and um, they—that's how we know when it's it's uh, uh, winter's coming. You know, because it's Florida after all. So, and we they they arrive, and we know when spring is uh, is coming. They they leave and go north. Now, have you seen a pigeon ever? The kind of common pigeon. No, I've never seen a pigeon, pigeon. David. What, what are they? <laughs> why is their Why does their neck kind of move when they walk? And that kind of goes back and forth. Have you ever figured that out? Why is that? Um, no, I have I not that. figured that out. But that's a good question. I'll Google it after our I'm session. Here. Curious, <laughs> curious to know why that happens. So now you won your Pulitzer Prize for a book about the golf. Yes. And what what, what if I didn't read the book, which I haven't? I'm sorry to say. What is the most important thing? that I should know about the golf that I would learn if I read the book? Well, what I wanted uh, people to know, readers to know, is that the golf is more than this oil sump and hurricane alley that it has this rich, wonderful, uh, natural and, and cultural history. And it's a history that has been ignored by the uh, US history books. Uh, it's very much an American sea. Yes, we share a coastline with Mexico and Cuba, um, but um, it's, it's played an important role in the history of the United States that a lot of people don't know about. So when you're writing a book, do you sit down and just uh, write out longhand? Do you do the research first and then write, research and write? How do you do your books? I combine research and writing together. I focus on one chapter at a time. I have very basic outlines, which generally consist of post-its that I put on the file cabinet next to me very general outlines that, that I um, follow, and th but, but that allows me not to follow um, because I like to be surprised when I get up in the morning to write. I'm an early morning writer, sometimes three o'clock in the morning. Three and I have a general idea of what direction I'm going in, and, uh, but I'm also um, aware that there may be surprises that send me in different directions. So if you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, do you ever say, you know, I could sleep in the 4 or 5, it won't make a difference? I, I get up, I write for a couple hours, and then I go back to sleep again. 
and so I do a second sleep. Oh wow! That's Ben Franklin did that, and um, uh, and then I wake up and then I get up again and, and, and write, and that way I have two mornings of writing in one day. Ben Franklin did it, but he turned out not to like the bald eagle. You do it, and you like the bald eagle. I I like the bald eagle, yes. Okay, so um, do you ever have your students help you, or they don't really they don't want to get involved in writing your books with you? Um, I I. Um, I, no, I have not. But I had, I did uh, hire a research assistant who was an independent researcher um, with uh, when I was writing the Bald Eagle book, and I'll, I'm going to try to hire a graduate student. And when for you teach new students book. today, do they ask the same question that I used to ask? Was is this going to be on the exam? Do they ever ask that? <laughs> they don't because I don't give exams. You don't. So no. how do you how do you give I grades? I, I I sign papers to write. So okay. it's, yeah, and you I have, emphasize writing in my. You classes. have to read these papers. I have to read these papers. Oh, is, is that less fun than writing your books? Well, it makes me, I, uh, it makes me look more seriously at retirement every day. Um. <laughs> no, I, no it's, I mean, yeah, uh, some of them, just some of them, but some of them are just wonderful to write. I learn a lot from my students. Right. I, 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 I truly do. So you've heard the expression eagle-eyed. That yeah. means that somebody has a good eyesight. Why is that? The eagles have such good eyesight, that's where the phrase came from? That's apparently where the phrase comes from, yes. Uh, and dates to, as I recall, I write about it in the book, as I recall, 1600. So uh, many symbols, uh, many things in the United States use the eagle as a symbol, uh, not just U.S. government, but why is it the eagle is just seen as such a strong animal? Yeah. Is that why people like to use the eagle as a kind of a symbol of whatever their company might be? Yes, uh, I mean, look at it, it does. I mean, it, eagle has been a symbol for nation states dating back to the ancient Greeks and Romans. Uh, and, uh, but those have all been generic eagles, you know, non-ornithological. But they, they look powerful, they look strong. I mean, there's even, uh, the, a, a, a Germany for years has had an eagle, and there's even an eagle that has its, its wings open, but it looks like a, a strong man flexing its, its muscles. Uh, now, in the seal of the United States, we have the eagle, and it has talons that have different, one has, I guess it's, um, uh, arrows, is that right? Yes, arrows in one, one and, and, the other? Uh, and all the branches in the other. And that's the symbol, symbolize peace and, and fighting or protection? Yes, peace, peace and strength or, or protection, yes. And today, uh, would you say that when you tell people you're an expert in bald eagles, what do they most commonly ask you? They ask me about Ben Franklin. Really? Yeah. But it's, or, no, no, they don't want to ask me, they tell me. They say, you know, but you it, know Ben Franklin wanted the turkey. But and then I, then I have so much fun. But the truth is, I think I read in your book that Ben Franklin never said anything negative about him. It was like a letter 25 years later that his daughter released or something. Is that true? Or did he actually? He had written a, a letter to his, his daughter um, that was um, published in a collection of, by his grandson and by a, in a collection of his letters uh, in, as I recall, 1817. So well after his death. Uh, he did criticize the bald eagle, but... Um, he, he never said he wanted the turkey as a, uh, on the Great Seal. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you, you won't believe what he wanted on the Great Seal. We're not going to tell him, David, because we want him to buy the book, right? <laughs> you, you, it will blow your mind. He was on the first seal committee to, to uh, create a Great Seal. He, Jefferson, and Adams, they failed miserably. St stellar cast, they failed miserably. You just won't believe what Ben Franklin wanted. Well, give us a hint. Um... Um, that you won't believe it. Okay. Okay. So um, we have some time for some questions. Anybody have any questions for Jack? We can stand up here and uh, I think there's a mic here, right here. Yes. Ask a question. Thank you. Um, so you said the bald eagle lives, at, you know, maybe 20 years, maybe longer. Does, do they have the eaglets in the nest uh, every year or every other year? I mean, that's a lot of babies. That's typically, like typically every year. If, if conditions are right, they'll, they'll have um, eaglets every year. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thanks for your question. Okay, next, um, right here. First of all, I want to compliment you on the eagle cams from Florida. They're fabulous. I watch them every year. They're just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Quest question I have is climate change. Has that affected any of the migratory patterns or even some of the nesting habits? N not that we're aware of because the bald eagle, as I mentioned earlier, its, it's migratory patterns are really random. Um, and they'll go, they'll go or stay wherever the food is. 
Um, so if, if climate change has an impact on local food source, they'll go find it somewhere. Uh, they'll go find food somewhere else. Okay, next. Okay, I have sort of a combined question. A lot of countries have eagles. Some, I think Austria has double eagles. Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned Germany has one. How does the, is the bald eagle the largest of the eagles, or how does it compare with other eagles in other countries? No, the bald eagle is not the largest of the eagles. It's one of the larger ones. Um, some of you may be familiar with the stellar sea eagle um, that had went astray from uh, probably Asia um, or, or Russia and made its way over here in the United States. The stellar sea eagle, for instance, is one that's uh, one of the eagles that's larger than the bald eagle. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Uh, first off, go Gators. Be hey, yeah. I'm ready. ready for we got that. another Gator right here. Yeah, right on. Uh, just a personal question for you. What historian has like inspired you to become the writer you are? Like if you had to name an environmental historian or just someone that you really like that inspired you to write, who would it be? Well, David McCulloch, obviously, um, yes. And there, there, there are so many of them. Um, one of my former colleagues, uh, Bertrand Wyatt Brown, um, a great Southern historian. Uh, there are just so many. I, I like to read good writing and let it inspire me, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. I love to read The New Yorker. Jill Lepore is a fabulous, you know, she's a great historian and a fabulous writer. And uh, I, I really can't name one in particular because there are just so many. If you name um, some, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a question here? Uh, you spoke to the mating rituals. One thing I've heard over time is that uh, a male eagle presents a female eagle with a stick when they're starting to build a nest. Is there any truth to that? Um, yes, I write about that in the book. Sometimes what a female will do, at least according to some observers, I don't know if science has actually observed this or not. Um, according to some observers, the female will um, somehow encourage the, the male, will, will fly off with a stick and she'll drop it in midair to see if the male can retrieve it before he hits the ground. And the speculation is that if an eagle falls out of the nest, will the male be able to rescue it? Uh, and um, so there's a good chance that that actually is true. Yeah. Wow, okay. The bald eagle versus the osprey. Do they coexist or will an eagle take over an osprey nest? No, the e eagle uh, generally does not take over an osprey nest um, because if it does, it loses a, uh, you know, a food supplier. Uh, and, uh, but they do, they do coexist. Uh, they, um, they're not the happiest of neighbors, um, but, but they do. They, generally where you see osprey, you will see bald eagles. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, first, thank you both for doing this. And Professor, thanks for your service to the University of Florida. The earlier discussion on the feathers and the eagle feathers uh, reminded me of reading in the Gulf about the, the role that uh, evolving fashion trends played in the decimation of other bird species. Yeah. And I'm curious if that was ever a factor, uh, the role of fashion trends yeah. in the decima near decimation of the eagle. N not, no, not really, because they're only, the only feathers that would have been attracted, uh, attractive to the fashion industry would be the white tail feathers, which are about 12 inches long, but they're, they're only um, a dozen. And so it's just not enough. I mean, you, it's much, you're, you get a bigger bang, uh, uh, pun, no pun intended, for your buck if you, if you kill a, an egret or, um, and, uh, uh, or a white ibis or an, another kind of bird than a bald eagle. So it, they were shot from time to time um, by those who were partaking in the fashion industry, but not, not often. Hey, here. I just thought I'd uh, supply this comment for you. There we go. Thank you. Wow. Right. Stay, take the key, tea kettle off the stove. Okay. So man who likes his eagles. Thank okay. you. I, I was wondering, they're such majestic creatures. What is your most majestic encounter that you've had with a bald eagle? So um, a couple of years ago, a uh, graduate student in journalism who was a photographer and I were spending a lot of time out on Payne's Prairie, uh, which is this wonderful pres preserve in north central Florida, right next to Gainesville, watching um, bald eagles fish every morning and watching them, um, you know, not only stealing from osprey, and they were doing that, osprey are out there too, but from each other. 
And once we saw two bald eagles fighting over a fish in midair, and that fish went between the two of them five times. Wow. And I feel bad for that fish. Okay. I am one of those people that found uh, a feather. The, the eagle had taken off and just happened to come down. I didn't know that they, you had to uh, yeah. turn it in, but I found out later. Uh, okay. But I wanted to ask a question. We have eagles in our neighborhood and the tree is in really bad shape. Trees have fallen down around it. I'm just curious about what happens if the tree they are in goes down. What happens to them? The nesting tree, if the nesting tree goes down, they'll, re they'll find another tree to re uh, build in. Unfortunately, sometimes those nesting trees come down um, between breeding season. Unfortunately, sometimes they come down when they're eggs or, or eaglets uh, in the nest and they'll, they'll lose their, their brood that year. Um, but they'll, they'll, they'll rebuild sometimes immediately or come back the next year and find a, a decent tree to build in. Would it be in the neighborhood or same neighborhood? Yeah, um, potentially. It's all about location, location, location for them. They want to be near water. Um, most, most, if not all, eagles' nests are, are located within 100 yards of, of a water source, you know, with, with, with fish. If, if they leave their nest, and it's empty for a while, will another species come in, another bird, and kind of use the same? Um, another raptor, an owl might, a uh, hawk might, yes. Uh, and even a songbird, if it's a nest is big enough, might use part of that nest as, as habitat, as its home. Okay. Can you tell a little about the talons, how long and sharp, and, and are they tearing up the food? Or are, they, are they chewing their food? They're swallowing it all down. Tell a little about the talons. Uh, and so the, the, the talons are... I've forgotten how many inches. They're slightly shorter than osprey talons and they're not as curved as osprey talons. I think I want to say they're somewhere around five or six inches. They are quite sharp. I call them pirate hooks in the book. Uh, and, um, and they are used to rip up um, the, the meat. Uh, and um, so particularly for the, the, the young um, who cannot you know, uh, handle uh, chewing meat as, as well as the adults can. Um, my question is about uh, kind of how they, how the eagles raise their young in terms of do the parents kind of teach them to fly and hunt and be like yeah. eagles or is it just kind of, all right, you're mature now, have at it? The second, that, that's a good question. Thank you for asking it. No, the parents don't teach them how to fly. They're, they're on their own. Their nest is in part so big because it's a, as one scientist from the 1920s called it, uh, a gymnasium. Uh, and you will see them, osprey do the same thing, young osprey, they, 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 they will bounce and they'll exercise their wings, they'll exercise their legs, and so they engage in this bouncing, and eventually it, it'll get more and more air, and they'll uh, uh, become brave enough to, to, to fly on their own. Okay. I think we have time for one more. One more, maybe last one. question. Go ahead. Um, participated in rescuing an eagle that was poisoned mm -hmm. and it died the next day unfortunately mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering how many eagles die of lead poisoning? You know I don't know what the, the exact count is but lead poisoning is the greatest danger to eagles right now and it's from hunting. Um, now hunters are among our original and our best conservationists uh, and but those who hunt big game tend to use lead, big game meaning deer or elk use lead and they gut their kill in the woods and um, the, the, the guts that are left behind the gut pile is contaminated with lead and lead the size of a shard of lead the size of a grain of, of, of rice can kill a bald eagle unfortunately as you know. So I'm afraid we're out of time but I wanted to ask if somebody wanted to get an autographed copy of your book how would they do that? You can go all the way downstairs, what is it, uh, I don't know, the basement floor, and there's a signing area, and I'm quite happy to sign um, uh, and personalize okay. um, copies of the book for you. All right, Jack, uh, it's a really good book, and you, you and I spent some time together in Florida uh, for something else relating to the bald eagles, and I learned a lot, and I really enjoyed your book, and uh, you know, I haven't read a lot of books about birds before, but I really enjoyed this one, so I Certainly recommend it to others, and thank you for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.